Welcome to the MyPar tutorial for running a 2D batch. So this tutorial assumes that you have seen most, if not all, of the image processor tutorials which involve creating a recipe to batch process. So what I'm going to do is start by just opening up the image processor and reminding us of what recipe we created. So let's open up the image that we've been working with and load in that same recipe. Now I'm going to load in the one that we made with layers and measurements. And you'll see that once the recipe gets done, we now have not only the loaded recipe, the end result, and the layers that we made, but we've also got um, the area fraction performed on the two layers and the results reported to us here in this dialog window. So just a, a way of automating everything that was saved into the recipe. Okay, so our two layers are the tertiary smaller particles and the secondary smaller particles and we will have uh, these steps in the recipe saved for each image that the recipe is run on in addition to these measurements measured from each layer in two separate spreadsheets. So just an overview of what recipe is going to be batch processed and what the outcomes are going to be. Okay, so we can, if we'd like, launch the batch processor directly from the image processor. If we launch it from the launch bar here, we get the image or the batch processor, excuse me. But if we launch it from the image processor with a recipe that's been loaded in, then that recipe is brought in automatically for us. So that's it. Let's show that again. Just from the image processor, launch, batch processor, in comes the recipe. If we opened up the batch processor fresh, then we would just hit load and we would pick that file and hit open. So there's the recipe to be batch applied. We have grayscale images that's been selected by default. Let's choose where to save the output of this batch processing. Um, we can just stick everything in the same folder. You'll see you'll actually get a separate processed folder for the processed images. That's the folder. We can choose to append or not append a suffix to the file names that uh, get processed. The underscore processed suffix is the default, but you can set that to something else if you'd like. Um, you will have the separate layers underscored with the name of the layer uh, in addition to the suffix. So underscore processed as a generic suffix is usually okay. You can set it to something else if you'd like. And let's pick the images to be added. Uh, we just have five images here today. So click one, shift, click the, the rest. We can move them around if we'd like to reorder them, but I think the way they came in by default is okay. Sort file names is automatically checked. Um, unchecking this will not resort the current file names. This applies to what you select after you hit add images. So if I hit, uh, if I unsort or file names, and then hit add images and picked a new set just pick the same ones for example those would get added to the bottom of the previous set in an unsorted fashion or at least in the it, it would only use the sorting that the operating system chose them with uh, it wouldn't apply its own sorting algorithm so again those got appended to the end of the list so that's how you could say select files to be processed from different folders Let's remove back um, 
those images, so we only have these five images to process. If you double click on any file in the list, you will see that image. It's just a way to check and make sure that you're processing the images that you intend to. So I think we're set up. We've loaded the recipe, we've used the default image type, told my part where to save the output, set up the images to be processed. We don't need a calibration factor. I did forget to save the recipe after one of the previous tutorials when we set up a calibration factor. Remember that any calibration factor that's present when you save the recipe gets saved into the recipe file. Um, so if I had saved the recipe after calibrating there would be a calibration factor here. But because we're only measuring area fraction we don't need a calibration factor. If we were measuring um, something that usually would need a calibration factor like uh, length and we didn't have one the length would be reported in pixels and if we do have one it would be reported in microns. So I don't need any of these options here. Um, these three are typically used for 3D reconstruction as is as are these other two boxes. So I think we're set up to run a batch. So let me just click process and we will start the batch. So down here we see the current process that the batch processor is on. We'll see this highlight move from one image to the next as we process through the different images. You see that number indicated down here, the percentage complete, and an estimate of the time remaining that will update when a new image begins processing. So we'll just go ahead and let the batch complete. Okay, and we finished. In terms of output, if we take a look at our folder where we've instructed my part to output all of the processed results. In our processed folder we have for each image a secondary and tertiary processed output since we had two layers each name, one named secondary one named tertiary. Windows does some strange things with uh, the display of binary images sometimes so these black lines are not actually there but I still wanted to show you just in Windows Explorer what the output was. So secondary, tertiary, secondary, tertiary. And it doesn't look too bad. So we'll take a look at these um, in a much more helpful way in the next tutorial on the image pro uh, I'm sorry on the processed image editor. Uh, but I also want to just quickly show the measurements that were output. So we got two measurements folders, one for each layer, and inside of measurements secondary, if we open that in Excel, you see for the five images we have the area fraction, and again this is for the secondary layer. And then if we look at the tertiary measurements, We have the area fraction for the tertiary layer. So that is a batch process and again uh, if you'd like to see a more thorough review and perhaps some edits um, of the batch process then uh, please tune in for the next tutorial or set of tutorials on the processed image editor. Thanks again for tuning in and I hope to see you next time.